Hello and welcome. Today is December 20th, 2023. I'm Drutter and it is with a heavy heart that I announce the passing of Derek Partridge of Ontario, Canada, also known as Endless Mountain. Derek died at home on Saturday morning with his family. He's being cremated and a service for him is being held today. Derek has been my personal friend for 15 years. He helped me get started on YouTube and helped me wake up essentially um, back in 2007 and 2008. I was seeing him uh, commenting on videos I was watching and in 2008 I think he started doing videos and at the beginning of 2009 I started doing videos and uh, we just sort of had a similar path and it has been an interesting 15 years knowing this guy. We traded coins back and forth across Canada. We bounced video ideas off each other. We collaborated on projects together. Uh, for several years, we've also kept in contact on the phone. In about 2010, we were both invited to a meetup of YouTube Truth channels at a resort or a cabin in Eastern Canada, but neither of us ended up making it and uh, we never did get the chance to meet in person. But nevertheless, I consider Derek to be one of my best friends, um, certainly um, an important person in my life for the past 10 or 15 years, and um, it's a shock to suddenly lose him. Um, we were born just a few months apart. We share many personality traits, skills, and passions and it has been an absolute pleasure to know him. I consider myself blessed to have been his friend. Derek's health problems will come as a surprise to most hearing this. He didn't talk about himself very much in his 5,000 videos, certainly not about his health. He focused mainly on his charts and his message. He suffered from HPS, a hereditary illness, that causes progressive nerve and muscle changes, especially in the legs, and leads to mobility problems that get worse over time, sometimes even paralysis. And uh, Derek tried various treatments and therapies over the years, but recently he had become quite sedentary, sedentary because of the, uh, this HPS and uh, the sedentary lifestyle led to a loss of morale because he was, you know, the kind of guy that liked to be as active as possible. Probably remember him wearing a lot of sports jerseys and stuff when he used to do vlog style videos. Uh, he stopped doing videos a couple of years ago and as you know when someone stops posting on the internet they disappear. <laughs> not so with Derek. He has not fallen from people's memories. You can go to his most recent video and look at the comment section sorted by most recent or whatever and you can see that people are leaving him regular well wishes and requests for him to return and all kinds of things. Um, he just hasn't been really online doing the YouTube thing for a couple of years which is strange because he was so 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 into it for so long. And um, he changed his channel title to Money Charts. He's still Endless Mountain, but the uh, the title screen says Money Charts several years back. And he certainly was all about the money. He understood money and currency better than almost anyone. And he could accumulate money with his skill at card games, sports betting, day trading. But he was the opposite of greedy. <laughs> he saw money as a tool which could be used for good or for evil. And he spoke out against that evil while using his own money for good, like helping out his family. And uh, so he was definitely not a greedy person. It's interesting because some people who get into investing and finances go that way and that's all they care about is accumulating and accumulating and they want more or whatever that they're looking for, that bottom line. And with Derek it just was not like that. And uh, he had a skill at accumulating money but it wasn't really what he wanted. He wanted, what he really wanted was people to be happy and for the world to be a better place and that's what he was working toward. <laughs> um, 
and I think that's pretty noble. Um, many of Derek's viewers did very well financially, uh, benefiting from his brilliant ability to pick out patterns and uh, spot anomaly and analyze data, understand the fundamentals. There's a lot of crypto millionaires out there, thanks to Derek. Actually, I have a funny story about Derek and Bitcoin. He became known for his crypto charts since about 2017, but actually I was looking at it back in 2011 and uh, starting to do some charting on it since 2013, but I'm not, uh, I'm not the chart chartist that he is. Um, but you know, knowing what I knew basically from watching him and other people do it, I could see that it was an unmanipulated chart, at least at the time Bitcoin was just, the price was just reacting to human nature essentially, it was just a chart of human nature, I think I said that a few times, and <laughs> I said we need to get you in here, Derek, we need to get your brain on this, <laughs> we need to get your brain on these crypto charts, please, 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 and um, he said that crypto, his Bitcoin has no physical value. I remember him saying many times, and I remember saying that too in the early stages. And that's not, actually doesn't matter. We realized later it doesn't have to have any physical intrinsic value. <laughs> it, it, uh, the code itself is the value. And I think Da Vinci, uh, J15, a mutual friend of ours, understood that. And he had been talking about it since 2011, Bitcoin. I sort of came more on board in 2013, and then Derek maybe about 2016 or so. And uh, so once he got into it, thank God he did, because he just changed the scene with his understanding of the charts, and he became very popular for his crypto charting. And yeah, he did very well, and so did his subscribers. And Derek would be happy about that. He's, you know, he, he didn't, he wasn't trying to make all the money for himself and be greedy or anything. He was trying to help other people to, to make money as well. And uh, he was known for saying, Everything you do is your own risk and your own reward. And that saying sort of developed over time, but it sort of came out of the idea that he's not going to take blame for your failures, and he's not going to take credit for your successes either. And that's something that I've said as well on my channel. It, you know, <laughs> but he said, everything you do is your own risk and your own reward. I thought that's a good way to say it. And uh, so if you did well because of Derek's help, knowing that would be the only reward he needed. After a traumatic, unwanted move in this past year, my wife Katie and I got around to sending out our Christmas cards a couple of weeks ago, and I put our new phone number in Derek's card, along with a picture of me and my little family. And then yesterday, there was a message from Derek's family on our phone asking me to call about Derek. And obviously I immediately got a bad feeling. I just hoped that it wasn't as bad as I imagined. Maybe just, you know, he's in the hospital or something. You know. But, I, and I assumed that it happened months ago. I didn't know the timing on this because I hadn't talked to him in months. So I sent out a card and all of a sudden got a message back from his family saying, uh, you better call. So I thought maybe something had happened months ago, but no. Oh, and uh, his family decided to let me know, I guess, when the card showed up is what I thought. But um, so I called back and I got a hold of Derek's mother. She let me know that Derek had died a mere two days earlier. And uh, they had called my number from the card to let me know. But she let me know that he had got the card before he died. <laughs> so that was a, that was a uh, consolation prize, I guess you could say. And she let me know that he really liked it. And uh, was happy to see a photo of me, I guess. I haven't really put my video, or my face in my videos before, so... Um, and I don't think I'd ever sent him a photograph before, so um, maybe that was the first time he'd seen me. Anyways, apparently it brightened his last time. Well, they didn't know it was his last time. I mean, he wasn't doing very well, but they didn't obviously know he was about to die. But, um, they said that he, you know, he kept the card and kept it around and was looking at it and liked it and was pleased to have been remembered. So that made me feel a bit better. 
after just learning that he was gone. And uh, I'm glad I didn't procrastinate on sending out my holiday cards this year. And uh, very happy to know that it gave him a smile. His mom and his sister let me know how it happened. It, he had a sudden pain and discomfort in his chest and he called out for his mom. Um, he had been living at home for the past several years as his health had gotten worse, so he was living on a family farm in Ontario there, just outside uh, Toronto. And uh, she made him as comfortable as she could. Um, I And I think, assuming they called the, the uh, ambulance and such, but it's um, it's a little ways, and um, I, I guess he was gone within 20 minutes. He was completely gone, and uh, I guess he couldn't just couldn't oxygenate his body. He couldn't get air in properly, and couldn't, uh, couldn't his heart wasn't pumping properly, and uh, it just didn't take long. And I guess, um, yeah, they and they tell me that that was his preference that it happened at home, and not you know rather than a facility. So I'm glad that that's the way it went. I mean, if it ha if you have to go, then at least you can go the way that you want and you prefer. Um, obviously, it would have been much better if he was still with us, but uh, for him to go out at home, I guess, was, was the way that he would have preferred. And the autopsy was done yesterday. It seems that a large blood clot formed and maybe in his abdomen and then moved up to his heart and lungs, and um, the clot is thought to have started either 18 months ago when he had a surgery, a different surgery for something else, uh, that could have had something to do with the complication of that surgery, or maybe it was uh, due to more recently just because he's become so sedentary as a result of the HPS, just his nerves and his muscles and his legs are not working, or not working, so uh, he was sedentary, and as you may know, sedentary uh, lifestyle can lead to blood clots forming, and then those blood clots can move around in your body and go to somewhere dangerous like the heart and the lungs. Derek started his YouTube career in 2008 with videos about seeking and accepting the truth. And he spoke on positivity, manifesting, the Mayan calendar, uh, the banking system, economics, corruption, of course silver and gold. And he was very big on physical bullion for savings. But he did trade the paper ETFs for profit. And uh, he pumped out just about 5,000 videos. That's a rate of almost one per day over his 15 years, the last 15 years. And keep in mind he hasn't been doing videos for a couple of years. So that's actually 5,000 videos over over 13 years, so that's actually more than you know. If this was Derek, he would have had those. He would have had that math. He would have been able to do that on the spot. <laughs> anyway, Derek touched tens of thousands of people with his message, and I believe he wanted to contribute to his fellow man. That's what he sought to do, and he certainly did that. I'm going to miss posting, Derek just uploaded a new video with a link in the Bullion Bugs chat room. I'm going to miss having his voice and his very particular way of wording things playing in the evening while I'm working on something. I'll miss his unique imaginative way of making a point. I'll miss the higher highs, the lower lows the Fibonacci levels, and the support lines. Derek was unlike any other, no doubt about it. I believe those differences made him powerful. And I'm happy for him that he found a way to put that superpower to good use, advancing our common understanding on important topics, sharing his insights, and improving the lives of others. Endless Mountain is the other Drudder channel and Drudder is the other Endless Mountain. We began at the same time, we covered the same topics, we even have a similar sense of humor and taste in music. I'm only a saver, whereas Derek is also an investor and gambler, but otherwise we're almost identical. We had the same goal, and we were going about getting there in the same way. We even got shadow banned 
together by YouTube somewhere around 2013 or so. Many of my viewers are Derek's viewers and vice versa. We mentioned each other in videos dozens of times. So let me pass along my condolences to Derek's many friends and followers. We've lost a brilliant mind and a great guy. Uh, I'd like to invite you to share in the comments your appreciation of Derek, stories about him, etc. Please think of something that you can personally do to honor him going forward. You don't have to say what it is in the comments or anything, but I would like, if you were a friend of Derek and he did something for you, for you to do something for him and do something that honors his memory and what he believed in. I intend to try to carry on the things that he started, but I'm not sure I'll ever come close to his charting skills or expertise. I won't give up on our shared vision of freedom, peace, and abundance. I'll be thinking about him each time I listen to his favorite bands, and when they put out a new album, he won't get to hear. At least, not in this lifetime. But, hey, <laughs> if there is another level after this, then I really hope I get to finally meet Derek there, and I look forward to giving him a big hug, and for us both to be 100% healthy, of course, and share a big laugh, and just go over everything together. To Derek's family, I again share my sorrow and extend my condolences. Thank you for giving us, Derek. You all must be so proud. I know I would love to have had him for a brother. At times, Derek was frustrated at the slow progress that we were making, waking people up, getting information out to them, even though the truth is literally at their fingertips now with the internet. He said that so many times. I can't believe what this hasn't already happened if we haven't already, you know, gotten where we're going. This is so slow. Maybe he had a sense that he didn't have, uh, much, you know, too much time. I don't know. But I intend to continue the fight as long as I can. And I believe it will one day be won. So it is frustrating that it is slow. But we are going to get there. If I could see him right now, I'd probably say I'm sorry for not finding time to call him since my move. And knowing him, he would probably tell me not to sweat it. <laughs> so I'm trying not to. Derek had the two qualities that give something value. Rarity and usefulness. And he had those in spades. He was one of a kind. No one's going to contest that one. And he was incredibly talented at what he did. Um, I value him greatly and our friendship. I know many others value him as well. So let's pledge to keep his memory and momentum alive. I'm including below a link to a YouTube playlist of some of Derek's favorite music. And I don't even remember how I found it. And I don't even see a link to it anywhere. It's, I, I can't find a link to it on his channel page. So I don't know how I got it, but uh, I found it just yesterday. And it's still I still have it up, so I'll include the link to that. Um, because I don't know where else we can get it. Uh, I'll put it in the, in the comment section below, or the more information section. And uh, I believe there's a message in his selections. I think he selected those. 50 or so songs and titles and even the lyrics for a specific reason, whether it just resonated with him in some way or whether he was trying to say something with the, you know, the, the feeling of the selections and so on. Just have a listen. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, YouTube has removed almost all the videos at this point. There's only 19 left. Most of them have been removed for copyright violations or whatever. But uh, there's still 19 there and uh, it's pretty interesting. So I'll put the link below. Derek, 
You sought to contribute, and you did. You are loved and respected by thousands. You've helped even more. It won't be the same without you, but I'm so thankful to have known you and been impacted by you. Congratulations, Derek. Until we meet again. Your brother in silver and freedom, Darren. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.